Hello everyone and welcome to the second episode of Yassifying Pleasant View. Uh, today I'm going to be looking at the Goth family house, um, Goth Manor, which is situated at 165 Sin Lane. Um, so we're going to jump in and see how we can make this look any nicer. Um, and I use the 4 to 2 download database, so I'll supply a link for that. So before we jump into the speed build, I just want to take a look at um, the house as it is at the moment. Goth Manor, I believe, is supposed to be a second empire looking house. But obviously, the developers didn't have um, the resources to do that at the time when this came out. But the house basically starts with an entrance foyer, which I think is quite a wasted space. Like obviously a lot of big houses have large entranceways, but this house on reflection isn't actually that big. It's a manor house, it's not a mansion. Um, so it's basically a very nice house. And then just to the right of the entrance, there is the kitchen. And then we've got the dining room behind that. And then on the other side of the house, we've got the cozy little living room. And then lastly, there's a downstairs toilet there and then the grand piano. And then upstairs, we've got um, Alex's room and Cassandra's room at the back here. We've got a family bathroom. And then we've got the master bedroom here for Bella and Mortimer. And they've got like a strange office set up in here, which I really don't like. I also thought this is very odd. So they've got like an ensuite bathroom, but it also leads into the family bathroom. And then we've got another flight of stairs, which take us into this like attic space. And there's literally only an easel up here. And then finally we've got this top deck. Hi guys, so this is me, uh, voiceover me, jumping in from the future now while I speed through this. Um, so the first thing I'm doing here, as you can see, is removing the original roof. Um, and I'm placing down a floor um, so that I can place the mansion and garden stuff, Second Empire roof pieces. Um, the floor isn't essential, but it is if you want to see a ceiling from below. Um, so that's why I've done that. And then I'm recolouring these using swatches by Michelle on Mod The Sims. And I believe this specific colour is the dark concrete one. Um, but she's got loads of different recolours and I was so happy to see these because the original colours of all this set are so gaudy. But one of the main benefits of using this roof system is you can have a significantly larger attic room as the roof tiles only take up one width of space. And then I'm just completing the roof here on the little tower section. And just a word of note, if you want to do the same thing on your goth manor, you need to enter a cheat and build a little wall to allow yourself to build up taller than five floors. And then I'm finishing this roof off with some balustrading. Um, and then taking off all these original base game windows, goodbye, goodbye, goodbye. And then I'm placing down uh, these tiles all around in sections. And you might be thinking like, what on earth is this about? And this isn't a permanent fixture. This is basically so I can place the corner sink and all the little architectural details um, that came with the Second Empire set. So it's actually easier to place them without move objects on so that they just snap to the wall um, and then these corner pieces definitely need a floor tile underneath so that's why it's easier to just place the floor and then remove it. Now I don't know why I built it all the way around when it just needs to go around that top little square bit but that's okay and then I'm doing it on this floor as well this does go all the way around. I just feel like that adds such a layer of detail. It no longer looks just like, you know, a 3D cube. It's got like dimension to it. And I dare I say it, 
almost makes it look Sims 4 quality. I'm now placing it in windows and this is the exact same thing as the roof pieces and I use these like half moon ones for that lower floor and then I use the little circle porthole one for that top tower. It looks like it doesn't match in terms of colour swatch but it's just something weird with the lighting on this lot that specifically targets that one spot, I don't know. And then I'm going to start dropping in all these windows. So again, this is the second Empire style. Recolored by Michelle, I would keep plugging that. It's, it's probably really old, but I'm acting like it's brand new. Um, and the idea of this is I'm just placing this with like symmetry in mind and like aesthetic because the building is an empty shell at this moment. Um, so I'm just sticking down the windows. And then if the floor plan dictates the windows later, then I'll deal with that then. And I'm also making sure I'm using different types of windows as well. Like obviously all from the same set, all matching, but it just gives that like a little bit of visual interest. Uh, and then I'm placing down these columns. Once again, second empire, and I did control F so I could shift them closer to the edge um, so they don't sit in the middle of the tile. Um, and then I'm doing that cornicing around the top of wraparound porch. And then I'm using the same fencing type of stuff just to keep it all cohesive. And then as a final little touch to the outside, I've got these ivy pieces and I have no idea which conversion they came with, but they're obviously from The Sims 4. And I just thought once again, they're adding that little bit of dynamism to what's essentially a square cube house. And it just makes the house look a little bit more aged. Um, and I did this on the other side as well, but I cut it off the video. So once I've done with the outer shell of this house, I move on to the inside uh, structure and walls. And basically I really want this house to be symmetrical um, because the outside is symmetrical and I feel like the inside should reflect that as well. And I can't lie to you guys, I've actually tried making over this house once already. And I tried to use the mansion and garden stuff, curved stairs, but because they're like four long and the house is an uneven width, um, you basically cannot have those stairs in the middle. So I opted to use the regular straight stairs so I can have more control over how wide they are basically. upstairs I'm still putting the master room at the front of the house and then I'm trying to build um, everything off of like a single landing where there is um, like the stairs are the focal point if that makes sense um, and then here you can see I'm kind of jiggling about with um, some windows and this is what I was talking about when I said I let the floor plan dictate the, the windows afterwards, as long as they're in place first. So I've swapped that for two single windows, and I do it on the other side as well, but it still retains that like symmetry and even spacing that I wanted. keep using the word dynamic shapes but because the game is very like square grid orientated anyway I'm always trying to stick stuff on the diagonal to make it seem 
not so rigid, if that makes sense. One of those front smaller rooms is going to be the ensuite for the master bedroom, and the other one is a family bathroom. And then here is where disaster struck because I completely forgot to put the fireplace back in this house. And the fireplace is an important feature of this house to me. Um, and I'm trying to be smart here and do it like off grid with these objects on and see if I can get it central. And then I was like, hang on, why don't I put it at the back of the stairs and like change the orientation of this house? And I was like, actually, I really, really like that. But obviously you've got the issue of the chimney. And this is one thing that I love about The Sims 2 that The Sims 4 doesn't do, is the chimney is considered an actual chimney in The Sims 2. In The Sims 4, it's just the fireplace. But I love having to, like, I love the challenge of trying to work out how to work around this chimney, basically. I know that sounds really lame. Um, so my idea for this was basically to scrap the stairs I had and have, like, L-shaped, well, well, I guess they're T-shaped stairs and have them split off on the platform um, so you can go left or right. And I actually really like this. I, I knew someone in real life that used to have stairs like this and it was like, oh their house is fancy. So once I'd sorted those stairs out, um, the rest of this was actually then quite easy. So I had to reconfigure the rooms for Alex and Cassie. Uh, yeah, I'm on a nickname basis with them, sorry. You don't know them like that. Um, but basically, it meant that the rooms were actually bigger than they were previously. And what I also realized is because the chimney breast was on like the quarter tile grid, the whole chimney fit in one square. So that was actually really space efficient. And then I was able to put two built-in wardrobes, um, in, well, one per room at the back behind the uh, fireplace. And then finally, I realized there was no downstairs toilet. And I was like, well, what manor house does not have a downstairs toilet? That would just be so embarrassing for the goths, right? So I had to kind of figure this out. After I just sorted out all my symmetry and I was buzzing with it, um, and I'm sort of deliberating here, I do put it in that back right corner, but the symmetry thing was bothering me so much. Am I OCD? I don't know. Um, it was bothering me so much that I put the same room on the other side as well because I was like, I can't not have the symmetry, right? Um, and then genius struck me and I was like, well, what if I use that as kind of like a porch room, like mud room, cloak room type, you know, multi-purpose indoor to outdoor room. So without changing the shell of the house too much, I basically just shifted the door along and I changed that little deck and I was able to have the symmetry that I craved so deeply. Also, if you're wondering what this bizarre structure thing is outside in the garden, I basically saved like every wallpaper and floor combo that was in the original house. And my idea behind this was because I was like, oh, this is a heritage house. This is like old and the, the wallpaper, it might be listed, you know, they might not be able to change the wallpapers and stuff. So kind of just having this like silly headcanon moment there. Um, but I don't, I think I, I actually think I keep the majority of them, um, mostly out of laziness probably, um, and then I'm using this specific manor house kitchen set, I can't remember who for the life of me made this, and I'm not even the first person to use this, in fact I stole this from someone else's makeover of Goth Manor, and I went, I'm going to use that exact same kit, so I've never had an original thought in my life. And this one is no exception. So yeah, I just want to mention, I, I think this CC set is 
not a Sims 4 conversion. I think this is someone's like original work. Um, and I believe this is actually the only piece of custom content I have that isn't a Sims 4 conversion. I don't know why I'm only on the Sims 4 conversions. I think that'll probably change as I get more into custom content. Um, because it's very new to me, amazingly, considering I've played this game since 2004. Um, so yeah, I put the original flooring and wall paneling from the original foyer back into this one. I change it later on, I think. Um, and then I'm moving on to this like parlour room here. And this is what I specifically downloaded this paranormal... I called it paranormal activity earlier. It's not called that. It's called Sims 4 Paranormal Stuff Kit Pack Game Pack Expansion Kit. Um, and I'm dropping all this stuff in here. And I'm like... Obviously I've made like a very small room here, but I, 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 quite, I prefer rooms like this. As long as they don't like affect the routing of the Sims, you know. But actually, as I was placing this down, I was like, damn, this this furniture is like vibrant. Um, I don't know why. I really thought that like, the paranormal activity kit <laughs> would be a lot more like dark and mysterious, but it's gone for that kind of like whimsical, uh, like. 2000s astronomy girly kind of aesthetic which I don't I don't dislike by any stretch of the imagination I actually really quite like I love the wallpaper um, but it's not quite how I envisioned the golf house to be um, maybe what I actually needed was the werewolves pack because I know that's got some like more grungy things well it's a really hard balance here because I'm not looking for like grunge I'm not I don't think they would live in like a dirty house but I want it to look like a house that has barely been touched and they sort of just live in amongst their furniture and you know it's it's been there for longer than they have that's the sort of vibe I was going for um so I'm now moving on and you can see I've changed the flooring to this paranormal activity kit <laughs> sorry I'm gonna keep calling that on purpose now um, I've changed the floor to that and I was like, do you know what, that wallpaper is a little bit too bright so I go for a darker one because although it is vibrant, like it does have darker swatches not as not as muted as I'd want them to be, but I'm not mad about it So here I'm using the classic, by this point, the Book Nook kit. And I just wanted to make it look like they had a lot of library books and whatnot, because obviously the, the Goths are known for being sciencey, or at least Mortimer and Cassandra are. Alexander's got glasses as well, he's a nerdy little kid, so he can be sciencey as well. And, Bell and Bella's just there to be gorgeous. Actually, I don't know, maybe she's into science too, they're very presumptuous. Uh, well, she must be into science, considering she got abducted by aliens, right? Um, oh, spoiler alert. Um, no, I'm just kidding. Anyways, so I'm putting a writing desk in this room as well, because I didn't want them to have that desk in the master bedroom anymore. And they haven't got a perfect built office, but because they're such studious sort of family, I thought they probably all sit in their like main room and work together and read books and do other little loser activities like that. Who reads books, am I right? Um, so I need to end this clip because I am getting insane. I need to tone it back, guys, tone it back. Um, but yeah, quickly, um, adding some clutter. And I really needed to put Mortimer's glasses in here because, oh my God, no, wait, he doesn't wear glasses. I mean, Cassandra, Cassandra's glasses. That's her spare pair, chilling on the desk there. Um, for when she is reading that's those are her reading glasses and the ones on her face are her everyday glasses what am i talking about 
It's The Sims. They're not real. Stop it now. Um, I'm pulling in this chair, and this isn't from the Paranormal Activity Kit, um, but I'm obsessed with it. A chair covered in a sheet just has such storytelling potential. I'm just like, that is a family heirloom chair, and they've covered it up because they don't want to get dirty, and that's that's where I'm going with this. It, it's giving the platter that I wanted it to give, um, so we love that. I was deliberating over plants for time, to be honest. Um, and then I put this little Grim Reaper here because I thought that was a cute little ode to the spooky ooky ghosts that live on this lot. So for this room, I used the conversion kit called Greenhouse Haven Kit, and I've not used this one before. And I downloaded it because I was going to give um, Priya Ramaswamy a greenhouse. That was going to be her passion. Um, but actually, it works well for this little uh, mud room as well. And basically, I'm just filling it with shit. You know, I'm like, what goes in the greenhouse? Seeds. Bang. Get them in. Um, and then I put this little box thing underneath the, the bench because I kind of want to just break that up that like they would have some actual like storage in there as well rather than just greenhousey stuff. Um, and then I deliberated using the Blooming Rooms um, kit instead because that's got like a bench that has um, like wellies and stuff. But ultimately, I thought it looked a bit too modern and I like the built-in version that the greenhouse kit came with. So next I'm doing this downstairs bathroom and I have not an original thing to say about this. Um, it's I'm using that colonial vibe stuff to make it look a bit classy and old and yeah, I basically just go ahead and put a few little details here and there on the ground floor. So I'll just shut up for a minute. So what I'm doing in this next ridiculous little segment is basically I'm like, oh, why don't I put like a statue in the middle of the stairs? But I wanted the Bella picture at the centre of the stairs, so I'm kind of like lowering the camera down, looking from like the front door angle, and I'm being like, what does that look like? And obviously any sculpture I put on the stairs is going to cover the picture, so I opted for these two um, busts either side of it instead, so they can kind of like frame the stairs. But I don't know why I thought let's put sculpture on the stairs. I was like, it's going to give like Titanic grandeur, but alas, it did not. Right, so you've just seen me pissing about with the front door. I couldn't get that right. Um, and now we are finally moving on to the upstairs. So the first room that I'm doing upstairs is Cassandra's room. And my theory, right, is that she's obviously an adult, but in theory, she's like only just an adult. So she's not gonna want some kind of like antique, dusty, crusty kind of room. Um, She's, she's a modern girly, so I used this modern luxe kit and I basically just used it in all of like the darker tones and palette and I actually think it worked out really well. I don't, like in reflection, I don't know if it suits the rest of the house, but 
her original room and Alexander's room in the original were very like themed to the fact they were once children and you know she had like yellow balls and carpet so I was like maybe she's just done the same thing but as a grown up. modern I might change that for like an older like the candelabra type thing there's no way Mortimer would be like yeah sure we can take off that antique chandelier and put this like modern heinous thing in its place So for Alex's room, I was basically very, very lazy and I used this uh, thing that comes with the base, uh, sorry not the base game, it comes with uh, pets and it's just the Atomic Kids collection and this is like an Ikea bedroom if I've ever seen one with a touch of space. I made sure I put this doll's house back in because little boys play with dolls too. I've got some dolls on the shelf behind me, so I'm always an advocate for that. He's gonna age up soon, and I love the team life state in this game, so he's gonna go full grunge, and maybe we'll get the werewolf kit for that one, and he can finally have his cool emo phase like his older sister. And then, so in the hallway here, I've taken the original swatches from the original hallway, and then in the master bedroom, I'm just once again being super lazy and I use the kit from Apartment Life called the Bohemian, Bo Bohemian Kit. I don't know what sort of colour palette I'm going for here. Uh, blue and anything else. I think, to be perfectly honest with you, I might have run out of steam at this point and I was like, let's get a damn bed in this damn room and have this over and done with, sis. So I think I might be really weird because aside from the little mud room at the back of the house on the ground floor, the attic turned out to be my favourite space in this house. Um, so once again, I'm using a kit. You're going to get so bored of me saying that if you watch any more of these. Um, but this one is called Basement Treasures Kit, uh, I believe. And this is basically a kit full of just like unusable, clutterable shite. And I was like, gotta have that. Love that. That's my kind of energy. And I just love having the small grid on and just going to town without placing this stuff all over the gaff. And I wanted this space to be like somewhat usable. So I've put this, the TV there and the sofa there. Um, and then I was like, why don't I just break this space up a little bit and make it more interesting? you'll realise in a moment, if you haven't already, that there are no stairs up to this room. <laughs> um, and I don't realise that for the longest time, which is very frustrating. So the reason I had to move those stairs over one space was because of obviously the chimney rest was in the way. Um, and I'm doing this stairs and I'm like fiddling about and I still haven't blocked that there are no stairs to this damn room. Um, and it's because there is that little space where I originally had the spiral stairs, but they don't actually fit there anymore because of the new T-shaped stairs below. I make this kind of like a, a teen hangout space for Alex when he is um, aged up. So there's like a little games console and a dartboard in there and I just like when you're a teenager like this would just be like the coolest little place to hang out or maybe it wouldn't but maybe I'm weird but I would long to hang out in a place like this. <laughs> So 
So because this is such like a big empty space, like I never have this opportunity in other houses because as I said before, I often play on like the smallest two lots. Um, so I basically made the most of this and I put like the free time train table, which I've never used because it's so big. And I put a pool table in here, which is usually reserved for uh, community lots in my game. Um, so I put those in there. Then I made this like little art studio around the easel. Um, and I did this because the easel was like already there, right? So I was like, oh, why don't I just turn this into like a proper art studio? And then I was like, no one in this family is an artist. They're all scientists. And then I was like, I wonder if Mortimer has his uh, career award in his inventory. And he did. And I didn't even know he had that in there. So that was just by chance. And then I was like, do you know what? Let's turn this into like his little science medical room. Obviously he's retired, but this might help Cassandra with her career as she's in the science career as well. And yeah, I just thought this reflects the family better than painting does. So that was the end of the speed build. I'm now just going to give you a quick running tour. Um, it's still speedy, so apology to the camera throwing around, but I didn't want this video to be any longer than it is. So this is the main foyer with Bella staring us down. And then this is the Goth's kitchen. I didn't really put any clutter in here, to be honest, but I thought, you know what? They've probably got a butler and they probably don't actually use their kitchen. <laughs> um, and then this is the formal sitting room or the parlor room um so they're just like having chit chats with guests um and then yeah just admiring that little stuff i've grown to like this pack after all after complaining about it literally moments ago in this video and then you follow through to their like informal sitting room study kind of communal area and i just love this room it's so cute i think i could have maximized more on the windows and had it looking more like a greenhouse type vibe but I didn't um, love the beaded curtains love this little mud room that leads you out to the graveyard um, there's another look for some reason <laughs> um, and then we're going back through the parlour room and then we're going to go up the stairs and I'm going to use amazing camera work ah oh, you see that so you'll notice here is where I've stuck the stairs to this floor above I kind of hate that I've had to do that because the master bedroom door is now tucked behind rather than being in the centre of that room. That's their ensuite. suite. Um, I've put the chessboard there because the stairs took up space on the floor above. And that was Alex's room. And then we're going into the family bathroom. I did those bathrooms super quick. Um, there's Cassie's room. Um, yeah, so I'm going to add more clutter to those bathrooms. I was just conscious of time because this video is already so long. And then go whiz up. Um, and then this is the games room. So those stairs like slap bang in the middle of that room as well. Hate that. There's Mortimer's little science lab. And there's a chair for a, a visitor there as well. So he can impart some knowledge to Cassandra if, if that happens. And then this is the little galley area with all their gubbins. And then Alex's little gaming station away from his parents. And then up again. And then you're on the roof. And that's the whole house. I hope you enjoyed this one and join me for the next one. Bye.